Howdy. I'm the old ranger, and Death Valley's my stamping ground. Many's the tale of adventure I'm going to tell you about the Death Valley country. True stories, mind you. I can vouch for that. In a glass case in the Sutter's Fort Historical Monument in Sacramento is this lady's blue silk umbrella, one of California's most cherished relics. You wonder what part a mere umbrella could play in history? Well, that's the story I'm about to tell you. It starts back in the year 1850 in the gold rush port of San Francisco. But the talk at this moment is not of gold, but politics. Will California be admitted to the Union as a non-slavery state? Or will the Bear Flag Party succeed in creating an independent republic on the Pacific coast with its own president and its own Congress? For months, the struggle has been going on. Feeling is running high, nerves strained to the breaking point. the meaning of this? Just settling a, a difference of opinion, sir. He called me a spy. That's a lie. Well, you insinuated. For what reason, Lieutenant? Because I said that Mr. Jonas and I are sailing for Washington tomorrow on the same ship you are. And all I said is, what's the idea of trailing us? If that's not calling me a spy, then I'd like Never to know Never mind, what... Darby. And you fail to explain that we're going to Washington on private business, not politics. Mr. Hastings had a perfect right to be suspicious. I suggest that you apologize. Apologize? Yes, apologize. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Hastings. I, I guess I did go off half-cocked. And I shouldn't have said what I did. Even though I still believe it. <coughs> well, uh, good day, gentlemen. I tell you, sir, both Darby and Jonas are trying to block us. They'd like nothing better than to separate California from the Union. They have a good chance of doing it if they can keep this Congress deadlocked until it adjourns. They're both hired by the Bear Flag Party. You mark my words. Well, I don't trust Elegan or Jonas or Lou Darby any more than you do, Lieutenant. We have no proof. And a smart soldier doesn't forewarn his enemy by voicing suspicions. Now, my advice to you, young man, is to guard your temper and your words from now on. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then we'll say no more of the incident. Yes, sir. General, hmm? with all the important matters you have to attend to in the East, I hate to impose on you, but I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Of course, of course. <laughs> Just uh, give me the size of your shirts and shoes, and I'll bring back whatever you want. <laughs> well, it isn't shirts and shoes I'd like you to bring back, General, but a couple of ladies. Ladies? My wife and daughter in New York. I didn't want them to come out until I'd gotten my business established. It's a long journey for two women to make, unescorted. Of course, uh, I'll be happy to bring them back, Ed. But uh, how soon it'll be depends on how uh, quick we get action from Congress. Which I sincerely trust will not only be speedy, but favorable. So do I. With all my heart and soul. And so, gentlemen of Congress, California knocks on the door of the Union, asking for admission. Asking for permission to reap the common benefits, share the common ills, and promote the common welfare as one of the United States of America. The passage of this bill points a dagger at the heart of the South. It is contrary to the spirit and intention of the Constitution, and therefore dangerous to liberty and equality. I still think we're making a mistake in bringing this doll, sir. I could have sworn I heard Mr. Crosby say two ladies. Just a figure of speech, Lieutenant. He showed me his daughter's picture several times. Carry it in his watch case. Pretty little thing with pigtails. 
General Bidwell and his aide, Lieutenant Hastings, from California to see Mrs. Crosby. Come in, please. Thank you. Wait in here, please, and I'll tell Mrs. Crosby. Thank you. Peggy. Yes, ma'am. General Bidwell and Lieutenant Hastings. My husband has mentioned you so often in his letters as his best friend. Is he all right? Splendid, ma'am. Couldn't be better. Except that he misses you and your daughter. In fact, uh, he sent you this. And this trifle from your humble servant. Oh, General, how kind of you. May I? Of course, dear lady. Take the doll out of the box and slip it to me when the little girl comes in. Helen! Helen! Yes, Mother? Your father sent for us at last. We're going to California. Oh, Mother! Oh, how wonderful! Gentlemen, my daughter. General Bidwell, Lieutenant Hastings. Oh, Peggy, place it right there. General, won't you have some tea? Tea? Uh, excellent. Nothing like a cup of tea after a tiring journey. Is this your first trip to New York, Lieutenant? Oh, yes. I mean, no, no, no. I've been uh, here several times. Which do you prefer, the East or the West? Well, I, I think I'm going to prefer the West now. If you're not careful, you're going to break that doll, Lieutenant. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be... <laughs> I, uh... Oh, we thought you were still on pigtails. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. On the contrary. I'm delighted. Thank you, Lieutenant, for the doll and the compliment. I read in the newspaper that Congress is still deadlocked on the question of California's admission. Yes. What I'm afraid of is they'll just pigeonhole the bill as the Congress before them did. Oh, I can understand how the South feels, but the Union needs California. And California needs the Union. It seems a pity that a few Southern senators can block everything. Oh, it wasn't only the southern states, ma'am. Your own senator voted against the measure. Billy, dear. Billy? You're acquainted with Senator Seward? We... we grew up in the same town. Mr. Seward wanted to marry Mother. Helen, really? Well, he did. And he's still in love with her. Mr. Seward is simply an old friend. It uh, was with the hopes of seeing Senator Seward that I came up here from Washington. You think that if he could be persuaded to vote for the admission of California, the bill would be passed? I'm sure of it. His opinion has great weight. General, I've decided to give a farewell party next Friday night. I shall make it a point to see that Billy, Senator Seward, attends. <laughs> California comes into the Union, Senator Seward. It will swing the balance of power so heavily to the North, I fear, I greatly fear, that the South will secede. Secession could mean civil war. Exactly, Senator. That's why it's so vital to the peace of America that you maintain your stand against California's admission to the Union. I shall keep your words in mind, Mr. Jonas. Thank you, sir. Again, I apologize for disturbing you at such a time. But I missed you in Washington. And it was important that the thoughts of my friends and associates be conveyed to you before Congress reconvenes. No apology necessary. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Senator. Good night, sir. And thank you again, sir. Oh, here you 
you are. I've been looking all over for you. Sorry, Eleanor. A couple of gentlemen from California insisted on speaking with me. Well, now a lady who's going to California insists on speaking with you. <laughs> Lieutenant Hastings. Oh, Mrs. Crosby, Senator. Aren't you enjoying the party? Oh, yes, ma'am. It's, uh, it's very nice. But you prefer to sit in here by yourself? Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, ma'am. I, uh, I, I, well, I, I was just thinking. It appears that the lieutenant has a problem. Yes, that's, that's right, sir. One that isn't covered by military training. It, how to dance with a certain young lady who seems too busy to notice me. But she has noticed you, Lieutenant. Or rather, she's noticed your absence. Just a moment ago, she asked me what had become of you. She did? And she seemed quite concerned about it, too. She was. And she'd be very happy to dance with you. She would. If you'd only ask her. Oh. Miss Helen. Oh, uh, excuse me. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Helen reminds me of you, Eleanor. Smiles at a man and he falls all over himself. <laughs> I feel sorry for those Californians. I suppose you're looking forward to the trip. Naturally, with Ed waiting for me. But at the same time, when I think of living out there, I get a strange feeling. Almost a desolate one. Desolate? Why? Because well, I'll be living in a part of the country that doesn't belong to the Union. Outside its boundaries. With no legal right to any of its benefits or its protection. No real right even to hang out the American flag. Does that really matter, Eleanor? Personally? A great deal, Billy. I love my country as you must love it. You, who've been governor of the greatest of our states. I wonder if you have any idea how proud I've been of you. You're asking me to vote for the admission of California. If you conscientiously can. Here it is, ladies. The Charter of the State of California. Signed by Millard Fillmore, President of the United States. September 9th, 1850. Our troubles are over. Yeah, there's nothing to delay us now. I've booked passage for our party on the first ship sailing out of New York. For our baggage. I do hope I won't be seasick. Are you a good sailor, Lieutenant? I'm the best sailor in the Army. <laughs> How about you, General? Do ships bother you? Well, I prefer a horse. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Well, if it isn't hasting. Don't tell me you're sailing on this ship, too. That's right. Yes, indeed, old boy. Yes, indeed. Looking forward to it with a great deal of pleasure. Aren't you? Hi, uh, Mrs. Crosby, uh, Miss Crosby, may I present uh, Mr. Jonas and Mr. Darby? A pleasure, ladies. Yes, indeed, a great pleasure. See you on board ship. Yes, see you at sea. With all the ships sailing for California, they had to pick this one. What a coincidence. I wonder.
particularly care for the captain's attitude on a California situation, sir. No, right, but every man has a right to his own opinion. The door is open. Uh, Stewart probably forgot to lock it. No, sir. The lock's been broken. You better check your things, sir, and see if anything's missing. There's nothing missing, Lieutenant. What they're after, you've got. You mean the state papers? That's right. I had a suspicion it was more than a coincidence that Jonas and Darby were sailing with us. Yes? It's Mrs. Crosby and Helen, General. We stopped by to see if you two gentlemen might... Oh, excuse the disorder, uh, bachelor's quarters. Is anything wrong, General? Uh, nothing to uh, be alarmed about. We have reason to believe somebody on board is trying to get hold of the state papers. Steal them? Who? Jonas and Darby. If they could destroy them, the time it would take to get copies from Washington might be all the Bear Flag Group need to put over their scheme for an independent republic. Why don't you ask the captain to put them in the ship's safe for you? Well, the captain's political views are not in sympathy with ours. No, the safest place is in our possession. But now that they've searched your cabin, General, they'll know you'll be carrying them. True, true. We'll have to constantly be on guard. I know, sir. We can put dummy papers in this envelope and carry them. An excellent idea, Lieutenant. An excellent idea. The first rule of strategy, confuse the enemy. Well, what will you do with the real papers? Hide them. Uh, someplace. With us. That's just what I was going to suggest. Oh, no, we couldn't do that. And let you expose yourself to risk? I should say not. Why, we wouldn't be in the slightest possible danger as long as they think you have them. We'll find a safe place for them. Don't worry. And we won't let you know where they're hidden until we reach San Francisco. Sometimes, Mrs. Crosby, I think women should be the generals. Someday, General Bidwell, I believe you'll discover that they are. Come on, Helen. Doesn't it make you feel like a secret agent or something? Guardians of the official documents of the state of California. Shh. The question is, where are we going to hide them? Oh, not under the mattress, Mother. That's too obvious. Nor in the luggage. <laughs> Nor inside our corsets. Much too lumpy. I know. Where? In my new blue silk umbrella. Wonderful. The ship is making excellent time. We'll reach the Isthmus before sundown, and tomorrow, we'll be on the Chagres River, heading for the Pacific Coast. And how much longer then, General? Well, the ship we're transferring to is the steam packet Oregon and... Good afternoon, ladies. I understand we'll be at the Isthmus by sundown. So General Bidwell was just telling us. Oh? Have you enjoyed the voyage, Miss Helen? Very much, most of the trip. I don't like this tropical climate, though. It's too warm. Well, you should have your parasol over you. Allow me to open it for you. Oh, it, it's not a parasol, Mr. Darby. It's an umbrella. I carry it in case of sudden showers. It's very pretty. What is the hand library? Helen, I left my fan in the lounge. Will you get it for me, please? <laughs> Certainly, Mother. Allow me. I'll get it for you, Mrs. Crosby. <laughs> Captain Wilson sends his compliments and would like to have you ladies and gentlemen join him in refreshments. Refreshments would be most welcome. Tell the captain we accept with pleasure. Oh, I forgot my cheroot case. I'll be with you as soon as I get it.
Lieutenant. Oh. Darby hit me from behind. He took the dummy envelope. <laughs> well, I see nothing amusing about that. Threw it overboard without looking inside. Oh. Well, now maybe we can enjoy the rest of the journey in peace. Can you tell what ship it is? It looks like the Oregon. It's about due from the Isthmus. Well, I hope it brings good news from Washington. If it doesn't, people will be tearing down the stars and stripes and raising another flag in its place. There's San Francisco. Would you like to have a look? Oh, may I? Oh, yes, plain as anything. Oh, look, Mother. Lieutenant. Present my compliments to the captain. Tell him to fire the cannon as soon as we enter the harbor. Yes, sir. Bob, wait, my umbrella. Firing the cannon was their signal for success. Did you look at those papers before you threw them overboard? I know. I, I naturally thought that the... You thought exactly what they wanted you to think. Quick, get down below and search their luggage. Looking for something, Darby? Lieutenant? Just settling a difference of opinion, sir. Well, it should be settled by this time. Make yourself presentable. We're going ashore shortly. Yes, sir. My umbrella! Mr. Darby, when we go ashore, you may carry my umbrella. Pleasure, Miss Helen. A great pleasure. Thank you for bringing my family to me. You too, Bob. It was a pleasure, sir. Sir, here comes the governor. The governor? Yes, he happened to be in town. We planned quite a ceremony for the occasion. You brought the documents? Mrs. Crosby did. Eleanor did. Not I. It was Helen. I think the time has come, my dear. Yes, madam. Mr. Darby, would you be so kind as to open my umbrella? Open it? That's where they were. General Bidwell, this is a momentous day. It is indeed, sir. And I would like to present Mrs. Crosby and her daughter, Helen, who had so much to make it so. I am honored, ladies. And I am honored, Governor Burnett, for the privilege of presenting to you these papers signed by the President of the United States, admitting California into the Union as a free state. In the name of the state of California, I thank you. Uh -huh. 